All right, let's go into question four. So we, they say consider the function f of x, which is minus 2x plus 5 divided by x minus 1. They say show using necessary calculations that f can be written in the form f of x. That's a over x plus p plus q. All right, now, ladies and gents, you know this calculation, not very popular, but it's something that you really need to be able to do, right? So firstly, in order for you to do that, you have to recreate what's in the denominator, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write minus 2x, right, plus 2, okay, because I know I can factor out the 2 there so that I have x minus 1. But remember, this is plus 2 plus 3, right? so that we don't change anything about the numerator, right? So remember it was plus five, right? So two plus three gives us five. All of that divided by x minus one. So I'm going to separate this expression over here, all right, from the three. So we have minus two x plus two over x minus one plus three, over x minus 1. So that's the, those are the laws of fractions, right? Our denominators are the same, which are simply at the numerators. Right, so now what I have at the top there is that I've got negative 2. So I can take out the negative 2. And what do I have? I've got x minus 1. That's exactly what I wanted. Divided by x minus 1, right? Plus 3 over x minus 1. And what happens? This cancels with that, and I'm left with negative 2 plus 3 over x minus 1. So that is your f of x value. And if you want to write it in the standard form, that's 3 over x minus 1, that's minus 2. Right, and that is how the cookie crumbles over there. Right, and now they say to you, uh, write down the equation of the asymptotes, right, uh, of f, if f of x is 3 over x minus 1 minus 2, which is exactly what we found. So remember, so this would be our vertical asymptote. So, so for our, okay, so that's 4.2. Okay, um, so we've got our x or vertical asymptote is x is equal to 1. Please remember that it actually changes sign, right? And then the other asymptote is y is equal to negative 2. So the y1 actually uh, just remains as is, right? So that those are the two equations of our asymptotes. Now let's go for the next one. So for 4.3, they say calculate the, the intercepts of the graph of f with the axes. Right. So looking for the x-intercept as well as the y-intercept. Okay. So that's the other part there. So we know for the x-intercept, we're going to say y is equal to 0. Okay. Or f of x is equal to 0. So we're going to say 3 over x minus 1 minus 2 is equal to 0. Right, now if we cross multiply there, or if we say uh, 3 over x minus 1 is equal to 2. Now remember, this is 2 over 1, right? So if we cross multiply, we've got 2 into x minus 1, 2 times x minus 1 is equal to 3. Right, and so as a result, to find our, so this is going to be 2x minus 2 is equal to 3. If we take this to the other side, so 2x is equal to 5. And if we divide both sides by 2, we get x is 5 over 2. Now note, this is the x-intercept, and so the y-intercept We know x is equal to 0. So we're taking f of 0 
So everywhere we see x, we are simply going to put a 0 there. So 3 divided by 0 minus 1. Okay, that's minus 2. And so that gives us negative 3, negative 2. And so that will be negative 5. Right, so our x, our y-intercept is where x is 0 and y is negative 5. But of course, for our... Um, y in uh, sorry rather for our x intercept we've got 5 over 2 and 0 and for y intercept is 0 and negative 5 All right now they say to us sketch the graph of f right so now we know that we've got our x intercept our y intercept as well as our uh, asymptotes so that's the first thing that we're going to draw there uh, our asymptotes so uh, please remember to label your axes, ladies and gents. Uh, it is quite important. Right, so our, x, our asymptotes, uh, rather, are going to be at x is, uh, we said, uh, positive 1. So we know that we're going to have a vertical asymptote there. But we also have another one at y is negative 2, right? So remember our equation there, we did say x is 1, y is negative 2, right? And then we've got at 5 over 2 and 0. So 5 over 2 and, and 0, we got, we've got uh, our x-intercept there. And then at 0 and negative 5, we've got our y-intercept. Please note um, uh, my graph is really not drawn to scale, ladies and gents. So it's really not the most accurate. So this is what our graph is going to look like. All right, so this is one over here. We said this is negative two over there. And this, let's label it. This is going to be uh, five over two and zero. And that is going to be zero and negative five. Right, so that's how our graph is going to look like. Okay, let's look at the next question. They say to us, write down the range of uh, y is equals to minus five uh, and minus f of x. Right, now I want you to notice this. So what are we doing now? We are actually looking for, if we reflect this graph about the x-axis. So which means, our asymptote is no longer going to be at negative 2, but it's going to be at positive 2. So which means, now remember this is, you know, applicable for all values. Y is an element of real numbers, right? So this is 4.4, I believe, uh, 4.5 actually. Okay, so for 4.5, we know Y is an element of real numbers, right? It's from negative infinity to infinity. However, y cannot be equal to, remember once we reflected about the x-axis, so we say that y cannot be equal to 2. Whereas for this graph of f of x, uh, y would not be equal to negative 2. And so finally, they say to us, describe in words the transformation of f to g if g of x is um, equal to minus 3 over x plus 1 minus 2. Now, let's write down that equation. So g of x would be negative 3 over x plus 1 minus 2. Now, we want to compare this with f of x, right? Now, you remember that this was x minus 1 uh, initially, and that was positive. But you see that the um, y asymptote, okay, uh, the horizontal asymptote still remains the same. So my suspicion, let's see if we took f of minus x. That is, if I actually um, am going to reflect this about the y axis, right? So... That would be, if I take the graph of f, that would be 3 divided by, 
okay? So remember, now this becomes minus x minus 1, right, minus 2. But if I can simplify this, what does it become? It becomes 3 over negative x plus 1, okay, minus 2. But you see now, in this case, I can multiply by negative, but what I do on the uh, bottom, I do at the top. So what do I have? Negative 3 divided by x plus 1 minus 2. So let's describe uh, what the transformation is from f to g. So it means that we are reflecting the graph of f uh, of f of x um, around the y-axis, uh, the y-axis. Right, so uh, that is really how we are going to do it. So that is how we actually, uh, what we did to get the graph of G. We reflected the graph of F around the y-axis and that's how we got the graph there of G of X. Ladies and gents, let's move on to the next section, right? And we leave it there for this graph.